History should focus on the newborn's feeding, voiding, stooling, and mental status. Some questions you may ask on the history include, is the baby exclusively breastfed? If so, does mom feel like breastfeeding is going well? Has her milk come in? Is the baby latching? How many times has the baby fed in the last 24 hours? How long does the baby feed at the breast? Has the baby gotten any formula feeds? How many wet diapers has the baby had in the last 24 hours? How many stools in the last 24 hours? Have the stools transitioned from meconium to yellow and seedy? Is the baby waking to feed? Does the baby seem hungry? Other history questions should focus on risk factors for hyperbilirubinemia. What is the baby's gestational age? Were there complications with a pregnancy or the delivery? Did a sibling require phototherapy? Is there a family history of red blood cell disorders, such as G6PD deficiency? Is the family of East Asian ancestry? It is also good practice to confirm that the baby had a newborn screen, as hypothyroidism and galactosemia are two uncommon causes of hyperbilirubinemia that are screened for in all states. Physical exam should be comprehensive, but we'll discuss highlights here. Weight is an important vital sign in these patients and should be reported as percentage change from birth weight. General appearance is also very important. Is the infant well appearing and vigorous? Does he wake appropriately with exam? Skin and sclera should be examined for jaundice. Head should be examined for cephalohematoma or caput succedaneum. The abdomen should be assessed for organomegaly. A neurologic exam should be performed with a focus on suck and tone. Diagnostic testing should always include a total and direct serum bilirubin level. In cases of ABO incompatibility, a DAT, also known as a COMS, should also be sent. CBC, reticulocyte count, G6PD activity, peripheral smear, and type and screen should be considered in cases of severe hyperbilirubinemia early onset of hyperbilirubinemia within the first 24 hours of life, rapid rate of bilirubin rise greater than 0.5 mg per deciliter per hour, failure to respond appropriately to phototherapy, or persistent hemolysis. The AAP nomogram, which can be downloaded from the primary literature or found at www.bilitool.org, defines treatment thresholds for hyperbilirubinemia in infants born at gestational age greater than or equal to 35 weeks. Enter the total serum bilirubin level and the age in hours at which it was measured and the nomogram will give you the bilirubin threshold at which to initiate phototherapy. There are three curves or three different thresholds at which to initiate, designated low risk, medium risk, and high risk. A gestational age of less than 38 weeks or the presence of neurotoxicity risk factors such as isoimmune hemolytic disease or ABO incompatibility should prompt infants to be evaluated on the medium or high-risk curves. If your patient is below the phototherapy threshold, the nomogram and Billy tool will risk stratify the likelihood of the patient needing phototherapy in the future. Finally, when you are calculating your patient's phototherapy threshold, it is good practice to determine the exchange transfusion threshold, which can be done on the AAP nomogram, but is not part of Billy tool.